Welcome to the UT Health East Texas Virtual Education Series. Today's presentation topic is Facts About Sleep, featuring Dr. Carla Wayne Kosick, board certified in pulmonary disease, critical care, and sleep medicine at UT Health East Texas Pulmonary Institute. Hi, I'm Dr. Wayne Kosick, and today I'm here to talk a little bit about sleep. Up until recently, sleep was an unknown science. Um, as the years have gone by, we have learned significant amounts of information regarding our sleep. So sleep is of the brain, by the brain, and for the brain. This is a quote by um, Dr. Hobson in uh, Nature back in 2005. And we're going to dig down a little bit of what does this mean. The need for sleep. Like the essential things in life, food, water, air, our body needs sleep in order to survive. It's defined as the natural and periodic state of rest during which consciousness of the world is suspended. And this is published in Sleep in um, October, 20, uh, October 23, 2007. So I found this very interesting about um, the myths and facts of sleep, and I'm sure all of us have heard a little bit about the myths of uh, sleep. This is coming from the National Sleep Foundation and the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. So myth, snoring is a common problem, mostly in men, but it isn't harmful. So is that true? So in fact, snoring is usually harmless but it could also be a symptom of a potential dangerous underlying medical condition called obstructive sleep apnea. This is usually accompanied by excessive daytime sleepiness. <clears throat> so we know a little bit about snoring and what uh, this could entail. Myth, alcohol helps you sleep. Fact, Alcohol in sufficient quantities can put you to sleep. Unfortunately, as the body metabolizes the alcohol, the chemical produced while it's metabolized may also lead to sleep fragmentation. This sleep obtained when one drink of alcohol is usually not a restful sleep. Alcohol can also worsen underlying sleep conditions such as obstructive sleep apnea. On chronic users, it can also decrease our deep wave sleep, as well as our REM sleep. Overall, alcohol is a poor choice as a sleep-promoting agent, and it generates a non-refreshing sleep. I'm sure none of us want a non-refreshing sleep. Myth. You can cheat on the amount of hours you get on sleep. Fact. Sleep debt can be difficult to pay back when it becomes too big. It can lead to multiple health problems, lack of productivity, medical problems such as hypertension and mood disorders. And it can translate in safety issues, both at home and at work. Myth, opening up the window and turning up the radio and turning on the air conditioning can be effective ways to stay awake while driving. Facts, if a person finds himself or herself sleepy while driving, the best thing is to pull a sight. Find a safe place, like a safe rest area, and take a nap. The best prevention to avoid drowsy driving is a good night's sleep. If despite believing one got a good night's sleep and still, drizing, is, is still drowsy, please contact your healthcare provider as you could have an underlying condition such as obstructive sleep apnea that needs to be corrected. Myth. Teens who fall asleep in class have bad habits and or are lazy. That's absolutely a myth. In fact, most teens are known as night owls. Their circadian rhythm or internal clock is delayed, meaning the more awake hours are usually at night. 
leading to late nights. And as a consequence, morning hours are very hard for teenagers, finding themselves very sleepy in all morning classes. Myth. Daytime sleepiness always means a person is not getting enough sleep. Fact. Excessive daytime sleepiness is a condition in which an individual finds very drowsy during the the day and has the urge of falling asleep. Many conditions can be an underlying cause of this excessive daytime sleepiness, such as we mentioned before, obstructive sleep apnea. Myth, health problems such as obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and depression are unrelated to the amount and quality of sleep that somebody has. Fact, insufficient sleep can have multiple impacts in life that can, uh, but are not limited to weight gain, hypertension, insulin resistance, and mood disorders. Myth, the older you get, the fewer hours of sleep you need. It would be great if that would be the case, but the fact is that while sleep patterns do change as we age, the amount of hours remains the same. People do get sleep, do get less sleep as uh, we get older and as we age, um, but then uh, we tend to develop more sleeping problems as we age, which is probably the cause of this, such as insomnia, falling into bad habits, or sleep apnea. All this and other medical conditions will affect the quality of sleep that we get at night. Myth, watching TV will help us fall asleep in fact, while many people like the background noise, it's better to use a fan or perhaps some white noise. The lighting and volume changing in the TV will unfortunately disrupt sleep and create sleep fragmentation. Watching TV in bed can also lead to other bad patterns of sleep and eventually insomnia. Sleep by ages, we have an internal clock this turn internal clock is a very primitive clock. Healthy sleep requires adequate duration, timing, quality, regularity, and the absence of disturbances. Sleeping the number of recommended hours on a regular basis is associated with better physical health and mental health. Um, and it has great outcomes in learning, improve attention, behavior, and mood. This is a consensus statement of the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. How about children? Pediatric, um, pediat pediatricians recommend hours that vary from age to age, okay? In general, infants might require up to 14 to 16 hours of sleep. Teenagers require something from eight to 10 hours per 24 hours. Adults should get at least seven or more hours per night of a regular um, sleep at night to promote our optimal health. So our internal clock, this is a circadian. We have, we have our internal clock and unfortunately we have problems related to our internal, our internal clock. These are called circadian rhythm disorders. Our internal clock functions in a cycle that lasts a little longer than 24 hours. This internal clock is based on visual cues, such as light and darkness, that communicate our eyes and our brain. This keeps our internal clock synchronized to the 24-hour day. Our cues in our day include meals and exercise. We have different types of circadian rhythm disorders, and according to the American Academy of Sleep Disorders, we, we can classify this in the following. If you have a hard time initiating sleep, if you struggle to maintain sleep, waking up frequently during the night, if you tend up to wake up too early and are unable to go back to sleep, or if you feel that your sleep is not non-restorative or of a very poor quality. 
These are cases in which uh, you should find a sleep um, doctor to help you with this. So we have different types of circadian sleep disorders. We have the delayed phase, or what we call the night hours, which we already mentioned, which are typically in the teenagers. They want to stay up, there are more productive hours or at night, but they cannot wake up during the day or the first morning hours are extremely, extremely hard. We have the advanced sleep phase disorder or what we call the morning larks. These are typical middle age and older adults with increasing age. This is um, your typical patient that wants to go to bed early and around four o'clock in the morning, they're ready and good to go, but they don't wanna wake up because their entire household is asleep. So um, this is part of how our aging can interfere with our circadian rhythm. Then we have jet lag, and whoever has traveled, especially eastward, can notice what jet lag is. You want to fall asleep at what the other rhythm in another country is, but it's not your internal clock. And it takes several days before you can function again. We have the shift work disorder. That's the person whose work schedule is during the normal sleep hours, so it finds itself very sleepy uh, while we are in, at work. And it's hard to fall asleep whenever we're supposed to be sleeping during daytime. And we have the regular sleep rhythm. The person whose sleep is so fragmented that we have multiple naps along the day. So we don't have any big, concise, consolidated sleep. We have just the very fragmented sleep. And we can, uh, we, this can uh, be associated with multiple neurological disorders, including dementia. We also have the free run or non-24 in which our brain receives no light. And we can see this in people who are blind. And also we can see this in underlying dementia. So the effects of circadian rhythm disorders is we get sleep loss, we get excessive daytime sleepiness, we get insomnia, we can get depression, we can get impaired work performance and disrupted social schedules. We can also put many relationships to stress. Unfortunately, when it comes to sleep, our society has a lot of problems when it comes to sleep. We have a sleep-deprived society, also known as insufficient sleep, a condition in which the individual does not receive the length the consistency or the type of sleep necessary for the mind and the body to become restored. In February 24th, 2005, we have a great article which is called The Sleep Death. It reported that the lifestyle currently lived by the American population, which demands of work and social activities along with electronics, have impacted the amount of time that we sleep. The average required by the average adult is still seven to eight hours a night. In our fast-paced life, arriving home in the evening after a long day of work, with little time to housework and catching up with chores, have many Americans running on six hours per night and perpetuating what we have called this sleep debt. Only 37% of our American adults receive a total of eight hours of sleep. Nearly 31 receive less than seven hours. So this could perpetuate and create bad um, sleep habits and lead eventually to insomnia. So insomnia has a, a very great, a great prevalence in our society. 30% of adults have reported insomnia. About 10% of adults have insomnia severe enough to cause daytime consequence. Often we find predisposing, precipitating, and perpetuating factors when it comes to insomnia. 
What does insomnia lead to? It leads to fatigue. We get very moody or irritable or angry. We are very tired during the day. We get anxious when it's time to go really go and rest and sleep. During the day, we lack concentration. Our memory is not the best. We have very poor school and work performance. We lack energy and motivation. We can get headaches. It can become more tense. Our stomach can become upset. And mistakes can happen when we don't get enough sleep. So obstructive sleep apnea is another a disease that is quite prevalent in our society. And as time has gone by, we have learned to recognize the importance of sleep apnea on our health. The prevalence of sleep apnea now affects 25 million adults in the United States, according to the National Health Sleep Awareness Project. The rising prevalence of obstructive sleep apnea in the US threatens our public health closely associated with strokes, diabetes mellitus, heart disease, and depression. Here are a few questions we received through our registration page. Do naps help with sleep disorders? So in fact, naps sometimes are very necessary in a sleep deprived person or a person that's not receiving a good night's sleep. Unfortunately, the more we nap during the day, the more fragmented our sleep is gonna become at night. So we're having excessive daytime sleepiness. The most important thing is know and seek help. Why is it that we're feeling so tired during the day that urges us to take a nap? Now. There are conditions such as narcolepsy that will actually be recommended whenever we have these disorders as it can actually help us carry on with the rest of the day. The other question is, what are some medical conditions that can cause sleep problems or insomnia? Anxiety, depression, our daily life, okay, um, can interrupt our uh, sleep at night. Problems that when we wake up after a normal sleep cycle, we all, all wake up after a normal sleep cycle around 90 to 120 minutes, we have a brief arousal. And most of us, we just turn back in bed and quickly will fall back to sleep. But if we have a worry, we might just dwell on that worry. If we go to the bathroom and then come back and get tempted to get our phone, that will, without a doubt, interrupt our um, sleep. This will pre predispose and perpetuate underlying sleep disorders, fragmenting our sleep tremendously and making us very sleepy during the day. The other question is, when should I see a sleep specialist? So if you feel that your sleep is becoming very fragmented for whatever reason, and it's causing consequences because of this during the day, I think a sleep specialist will be of great help. Thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed the presentation today. For more information about scheduling a sleep study or to schedule an appointment, call 903-592-6901 or visit uthealthystexas.com. Our next virtual seminar will be announced soon. Follow us on Facebook to stay up to date on upcoming events and seminars. Thank you.